What's up, vapers? Thanks for watching Spin Fuels Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and today we're going to be talking about the K Fun 4. So before we get into the review, I just want to give a huge shout out to MyVaporStore.com. They're the ones that sent me this to make this video, so thank you guys very much. I really do appreciate it. And let's get on with the specifications of this device. First of all, it's de designed and manufactured in Germany. It's constructed of a solid 316L grade stainless steel. It's 22 millimeters in diameter at the base and the tip, but it bulges out to 23 millimeters in the center when using the glass or the uh, steel stainless steel section of the of, of the tank itself when using the uh, polycarbonate however it retains a 22 millimeter all the way through uh, the liquid it has liquid flow control at the bottom so basically you can control exactly how much liquid goes in and out so if you're starting to get a little gurgle in your tank or anything like that you can just close it off a little bit and that's going to help with that it's also adjustable airflow as well and i'll show you how to do that in uh, a later portion of the video um, you have easier access to your coils. All you have to do to uh, get the build deck off is stick a little uh, screwdriver in here and just crank it uh, clockwise, I suppose. I, I guess if you're looking at it from the base, it would be counterclockwise. But anyways, uh, that's all you have to do to get into the actual build deck of this thing. So you don't have to drain the tank anymore. All you have to do is just take it off the tank when it's upside down and just set, it, set that aside and you can mess around with your coils on the inside. Uh, it also has a fill through cap section here, which I will show you in the close ups. Uh, all you have to do is close off the liquid flow and then open this up, fill it, and then close it back off, and you're good to go. Um, that's about it. It is 510 threaded, uh, but it also comes, or it, you can also get for it a, um, a hybrid adapter kit for the P3 Provary, the Nemesis, the Stingray, and a few other mods. Uh, if you wanted to give that more of a seamless look to it. Um, also, I did want to mention the fact that you can get a sub-ohm kind of uh, kit for it, which includes a peak insulator and a beefier, wider uh, bore airflow, but you do lose the ability to control that airflow if you actually end up getting that kit. Uh, so instead of having the adjustment, you'll just be able to have a wide open airflow, which does give you quite a bit more uh, from what I've heard of, of the uh, accessory pack for it. And you can also have the ability to build uh, sub-ohms, which normally on the stock deck the manufacturer does not recommend. Um, so, so far, I mean, I love this, this tank. Uh, it would be a bit pricey for me if I had to purchase it myself, but I mean, I think the quality really stands out. I think there's something like 86 different parts in this device, which makes it some, one of the most complicated devices I, I've ever seen. I mean, uh, it's pretty intricate when uh, you see the exploded view in the poster they give you. Um, so what's in the box? Basically, you get the tank itself, uh, you get the stainless steel section, a glass section, as well as a polycarbonate section, which you can use to retain that kind of slim look to it. Uh, you do lose a little bit of juice capacity when you use the smaller uh, full plastic tank. Uh, I think it's about, uh, about a half a mil or something like that. And with the uh, glass tank, you lose a little bit as well. So the, the highest juice capacity you could get in this thing, I believe, is like 4.0 six mil a liter and you get down to like 4.3 with the the glass section and something like 3.8 with the uh, 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 polycarbonate section so uh, yeah but other than that I, I'm loving this thing so far uh, I'm gonna take a few hits off of this just to show you a little vapor production and then we're gonna go down into the close-up view get a better look at this thing build it up and talk about it some more
All right, welcome back everyone. Here as you can see we have our Sfomestro K-Fun 4 in its original box. And uh, one unique thing about this is that it doesn't actually have a serial number on the device itself, but instead it has it right on the side right here. And there you go. Hopefully you guys can see that. My serial number is 03973. Uh, but it's not actually listed on the device itself. It's only on the box. So all you uh, serial number freaks out there uh, That might bug you a little bit, but for me, uh, it's not a really big deal uh, Anyways, you have the genuine Svomestro sticker just to let you know that it's a, an original product The uh, box has a nice texture to it. It's really well designed with the new Svomestro logo there uh, nothing else that's too uh, interesting about this. Uh, obviously, it says KFUN4, and right here, designed in Russia, made in Germany. Uh, but yeah, other than that, nothing too special about the box. Let's go ahead and open it up and have a peek inside. So, right away, you get this uh, little pamphlet here, and if you open it up, you get a little poster slash diagram so hopefully you guys can see this there's a little poster part and on the back it has a full diagram of all the parts and pieces and I know this is gonna start boggling your mind as soon as you take a look at how many pieces there are in this thing but never fear um, you really don't ever have to break it down like it is in this diagram there's only a few main components which I'm going to be showing you in just a second here that you really have to be concerned with. So I'm going to put that off to the side and here's the instruction manual that it comes with which is actually really informative uh, not a lot of you know broken English in there like you get with some of the Chinese products instead it's in German and English so if you can quickly see some of these diagrams in there are uh, very well uh, drawn up and very informative and it gives you everything from changing the tanks to filling it and how to install your coils how to open up the airflow all that stuff is in this manual so you really don't won't have any questions uh, or too many questions I should say if you actually take the time and read this manual um, so again, I'm just going to put that off to the side. I might be referring to it later because these kind of products confuse the heck out of me. I mean, there's so many parts in this thing uh, and it is it does get a bit confusing, but uh, hopefully we can work everything out to where I don't get lost and I don't confuse you guys as well. Anyways, uh, as, as, as configured here, it does not come standard uh, with the glass tank on it. I put that on. Um, just for the aesthetics and that's probably how I'm going to be using it most of the time but there's your K-Fun right there and as you can see the new emblem which I'll show you in greater detail in a little bit uh, you get this nice uh, kind of textured drip tip a little bit um, also you get the full stainless tank option here which is uh, pretty spiffy kind of maintains that same look as the drip tip and kind of has some cross hatching which is kind of nice and you have your full plastic tank uh, polycarbonate to be exact um, this gives it a nice flush look up and down uh, as you can see and you've probably heard if you're in the market for this device it does have a significant bulge in it along the sides here. It does go from about 22 millimeters to about 23 millimeters in diameter from the base to the middle section. Uh, so now I'm going to just go ahead and get the box out of here real quick and I'm going to go through from the top to bottom uh, show you all the parts and we'll get into it a little bit more. So we'll start up here with the drip tip uh, pretty standard, uh, normal bore drip tip, uh, nice O-rings, pretty chunky, and it's not that easy to get out, which is a good thing in my book. I prefer something that has 
you know a little bit more uh, strength to it so you really can't get it out super easy and a decent bore on there it's definitely not for your cloud chasing but uh, pretty good bore in my opinion next up is the top fill portion of this device this is new a new feature with this KFUN 4 they completely redesigned how you fill it and in this case you just take this uh, whole adapter piece off here and put your needle tip bottle or your dripper top right in here and just fill up along uh, these holes around the outside which I think is a major major improvement over the uh, 3.1 design um, considering you don't have to take the tank off your mod anymore to fill it um, and I'm really not going to break apart every single last piece for you guys because as you saw in that exploded view there's like 80 different pieces so I'm just going to go through the basics with you. Um, so this one here does have quite a few threads. It's actually this piece inside that's moving around not the actual outside here. So it kind of gets a bit bit tricky, but there we go. So as you can see this, hopefully you can see that uh, that piece is floating around in there, which that'll come right out. And that actually locks in the chimney section to the top of the K-Fun. I'm just going to leave that in there so I know where it goes. Next up you have your glass midsection. And if you wanted to change that, all you got to do is just screw the... Uh, the metal portion back in here and then screw the top portion on top of that to change out from glass to uh, stainless and if you want to use the uh, polycarbonate tube all you got to do is just remove this bottom piece and then swap that out for the polycarbonate sleeve instead and just use the, the normal top cap without the the uh, bulge piece here all you have to do is just remove this uh, then you have your chimney section, which can be a little bit tricky to get off from the base, but uh, just get yourself a mini screwdriver or something, and you'll be able to get off the, the build deck section of this uh, fairly easily. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a screwdriver or an Allen wrench or something, and we'll see if we can get the build deck off here. So just stick it right in there and twist it counterclockwise. There we go. Takes a little bit for those uh, O-rings to loosen up a little bit, but with a little wear and tear, I think it might get a little bit better. Alright, so there's your chimney section, which is actually going to be built into the tank section now, which is really nice considering now you can detach the base and work on your coils without having to take off the whole tank and take out the chimney and everything. All you have to do is just uh, take this bottom piece off when your uh, tank is upside down and you can just fiddle around with your coils if you're having a problem with your wicking or anything like that. Super easy to change that out. Obviously you have your little chimney section here as well so you're gonna basically start off with this when you're going to build on this thing and other than that you have your juice flow control which is at the bottom here which it's gonna be a little bit difficult to see but this actual whole platform right here is raising up and down when you swivel this counterclockwise or clockwise so notice the the gap right there increase right now I'm actually opening it up a little bit and that's gonna increase the flow this is also how you would change uh, the 510 connection to the con direct connector for the Provary or the uh, Nemesis or the Stingray or anything like that they, they make different adapters for this piece to make it into a hybrid so that's actually how you take that off as well all you have to do is undo that there's a little spring in there you gotta be careful you don't lose that but uh, 
that's that's how you do that I'm not actually gonna do this on camera because I don't have any of those devices so I'm just gonna keep it stock with a regular 510 and I will show you the, the last thing is going to be how to open up the airflow which all you have to do is first find the right size screwdriver and just remove the actual 510 connection be careful you don't want to lose this thing and inside there's a insulator which also comes out uh, so inside you have a little tiny screw thread and you can kind of feel it when you actually get your screwdriver in there but that's how you're going to open up your airflow but we'll save that for later for when I actually have the tank all put back together I can really judge how I like my airflow but uh, I'm going to go ahead and build a coil on this thing so give me one second I'll reset the camera and uh, we'll get to building this thing. So as you can see, I have my coil already built. Uh, it's just seven wraps of 26 gauge around a two millimeter bit. And as you can see here, the screws on top, it has four different screws, which would lead some people to believe that this was meant for a dual coil, which is not necessarily true. Uh, from my understanding, the manufacturer says that it's just to make, uh, to allow you to have different coil options. So you can do a dual coil, or you can just place your coils a little bit differently, uh, depending on how you like to build. So uh, I'm just going to do it the standard way, how I usually do my K funds. So just kind of finagle it around and try to get the screws all wrapped around. Which I am I am not the best at building K funds, so by any means don't take this as uh this is the exact way you should build a K fund. Uh, I'm just doing my best. Okay, that's one trapped. We gotta get this one trapped too. All right, and I'm just gonna wiggle off the little wick tails here, or the uh, the uh, wire tails, I should say. There's one and two. All right. So our coil got a little bit messed up, but that's no problem. All you got to do is just reinsert your drill bit and just straighten it out a little bit. Lift it off the deck. Make sure it's not touching so you don't get it short. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my mod and see if it fires up. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn down my wattage because I know that this thing is probably only going to need about 10 watts or so. So that's what I'm going to set it at. Okay. And we're not looking too bad already, which is uh, pretty good considering I haven't built a K-Fun in quite a while. Uh, just gonna fire it up again. And there you go. That's pretty much all there is to it as far as building your coil for your K fun. I'm gonna see if I can get a nice, good close up shot of the coil glowing here. There we go. And that, it's reading at uh, 1.0 ohms, so I got it right on the, the money with 1 ohm, 
uh, and I'm vaping, or I'm, I'm firing it at 10 watts, which I might end up bumping that up a little bit, maybe to about 15 or so, but that's what I was really shooting for. I didn't want to go for anything crazy sub-ohm or anything like that. I prefer my K-Funds to be above 1 ohm and nothing too, too nuts. So uh, first thing uh, when you go to you know rebuild this thing is uh, or when you go to put this thing all back together is this part of the uh, chimney section is threaded on the bottom and this side is not so it only goes on one way so I'm gonna thread that on here and you can actually wick this thing after this thing is all threaded on which is another advantage of the, uh, the version 4 uh, I have a bit of Kogendo cotton here which I'm gonna use to wick it and I probably need about eh, about that much and I'm just going to try to do this as quickly as possible. Um, so yeah, we're going to just thread it through here. Just like you would any little coil. And you want it tight, but not too tight. And that feels about pretty good. All right, now let's uh, grab our scissors and we're going to trim off the ends of the wicks. And basically you want to do that a little bit away from the edge of the deck. So right about there and right about there. And I like to give it a little extra fluff just by brushing it up with my screwdriver before I stick it in. And we're just going to take the flathead side, bend our wicks back, and then try to stick it in as best as I can without crushing it up too much. And you basically just try to block that uh, juice flow control down there at the bottom of the well. Trying not to crush it, trying not to crush it. And I might have a little bit too much in there. I guess we'll find out when we uh, try to vape this thing. But it looks all right to me. Not too bad at least. Uh, before you want to, before you put the whole thing back together, just take a little bit of your liquid, which I'm going to be using Moon Mountain. Uh, this is Vapor Trail. And you want to give it a, just a quick test fire. All right, well, it's making vapor at least, so that's a positive sign. I'm going to try to tuck in this a little bit more. All right, um, I'm just going to go ahead and put the tank section on, and we're going to attempt to fill this thing up and have a vape. So just screwing this thing back on here. And uh, one good tip I learned from Phil Bassardo was that it's easy to remember by filling this thing, you want to unscrew this section here, you know, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, and you also want to cut off the juice flow here. So as long as this piece here can't move anymore counterclockwise, then you're good to go. If it's uh, in a different position, let's say... say here, then uh, your juice is going to leak out and you're going to uh, leak all your liquid into the, uh, the bottom section. So one good thing to know is you always want it left. The juice flow, I should say, left, not the, uh, not the build deck portion. Okay, so that being said, We're just going to fill up the tank. Okay. 
and it, this this process is super easy now because of the uh, the top fill. All right, so that's good enough for now. And now we're going to go ahead and screw back on our drip tip section. And we're going to reopen the juice flow control. All right, so that was a quick how to build your K-Fund 4, how to fill it up, and how to in interchange the different tanks. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to the main screen, have a quick vape, and talk about the pros and cons. All right, guys, we're back. We're here to talk about some pros, some cons, and whether or not I would purchase this device. Uh, let's start off with the pros. First of all, I have never owned an, an original K-Fun or any of the previous versions. This is my actually my first K-Fun, and the only other K-Fun style tank I ever owned was the Russian 91%, uh, and also the Fogger V4, if you could kind of call it the uh, K-Fun style, but that one's a little bit different of a tank. So, uh, really the closest thing that I've had to a K-Fun is a Russian 91, and it's definitely a lot different than this device I have in front of me right here. Um, let's go from top to bottom pros and cons. First of all, I absolutely love the drip tip that it comes with. It's just wide enough of a bore to uh, allow that airflow to go right through. It maintains a decent uh, uh, airflow all the way through the device, which I really can appreciate. And uh, as well as the O-rings, I love the fact that this, these O-rings are nice and sticky. They're never, it's never going to come out on you. It's not wiggly, not wobbly, nothing like that. Uh, next up is a, a big and big time improvement over the previous de designs from what I've seen. I have done a few builds on Russians and on K funds before, so I kind of know the actual feeling of building on them and filling them and just dealing with them. But this thing is a huge improvement, having the ability to fill it from the top, and you don't have to take out any screws or anything like that. All you got to do is just take this whole section off after you close off the juice flow, and you just fill it right there. So easy, and I think that's a massive improvement over the previous version. Um, next up would be the fact that you can take the build deck out without having to empty the tank out, which I think, again, is a huge improvement over the previous designs. Uh, having that ability, I mean, me personally, I'm not the greatest at building k fun so, uh, you know, having the ability to adjust your wicking or your coils or anything like that, if it, all of a sudden you're getting a short readout on your device or anything like that, you can just quickly pop off the build deck without having to empty your tank check your coils, fix them if you have to, and then put it right back together as easy as that, which I can really appreciate. Um, also, I really like the juice flow control idea as well. Uh, some people aren't you know, cloud chasers like I am, so they're going to use it a little bit more restricted. They're going to tighten that airflow, and when you tighten the airflow, sometimes you get a little bit of gurgling. So if you start to get a gurgle, all you have to do is just close off that juice flow a little bit, and you're good to go. Um, other than that, I feel like it's, you know, just another K-Fun. I mean, I hate to say that because uh, I really like this design and everything. Um, but let's go talk about the cons, uh, and then I'll talk about whether or not, you know, I would actually buy this device. Now, my first con is going to be somewhat of a subjective con, uh, the bulge, the battle of the bulge. You know, everyone saw this thing, the prototypes and the, the preview pictures for this thing, and they immediately went to the bulge. Now, I'm kind of on that same board. Uh, you know, I really don't like the bulge. It's not a huge issue for me, but I'm just going to have to mark it down because I know some of you out there will agree with me that I think maintaining a sleeker look is the way to go. But, like I said, it's a minor issue for me. Uh, my next con is going to be <clears throat> just the sheer overall, uh, you know, difficulty of this entire system. Uh, there's tons of moving parts in here and lots of little pieces to get lost, and there's no spares to be seen in the box, which kind of concerns me. I really wish they would put a few spare O-rings or something like that in there because... Uh, for me personally, I have a whole drawer full of devices and I have a feeling that eventually uh, an O-ring or something might get lost on this thing and it would be kind of a tragedy because I don't want to, you know, have to go searching for O-rings or 
for a, something you know easy to to just throw in the box you know a screw head or something like that uh, I just it would be a, a pain in the butt for me to do that so throwing a few extra parts in the box especially for the price that you pay for this thing I think would be a really uh, a plus for me but uh, unfortunately they didn't do that so I'm marking it down as a con um, my third con is going to be the price. I hate to say it, but $180 is a little bit too much for a tank for my personal use. I really don't see myself using this thing all too much, unfortunately, because it is a beautiful piece of design, and I really can appreciate the work that's gone into this. Uh, obviously, I'm not supporting clones by any means. I'm not saying go out and just buy the clone of this because there will be a significant difference in the uh, actual parts that they use as well as the, uh, the materials as well. And obviously, when you're buying a clone, basically, you're just uh, getting innovation for free. You know, uh, the people that designed this had a lot of research and development. They put a lot of work into this. And I really, I can appreciate, you know, spending maybe a hundred bucks on it, but almost two hundred dollars is definitely going to be way too much out of my price range, especially with the other tanks on the market. For example, the Limo 2, uh, which has kind of a similar form factor. But uh, nevertheless, this is a beautifully well-designed device, and I absolutely love it so far. So don't really take my my cons too harshly, because for those of you out there that are planning on purchasing one of these. No matter what I say, you're probably going to do it anyways. So the cons are very, very light, subjective kind of cons, and it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, my final con will be the uh, amount of liquid that this thing holds. Obviously, it's not going to be a monster 6 mil tank, but uh, it's, it's you know right about in the, in the middle area between some of the sub-ohm tanks and the traditional K-Fun. Uh, at like 4.6 mil, I think, is the highest juice capacity, or 4.8. I Honestly, it doesn't really matter to me because the top fill portion is so easy to use. Uh, it's going to be just cake to just take off that top section and fill it. So not really a big deal either. My final topic for this video is whether or not I would purchase this device if I did not receive it for free for the purpose of review, and my answer would be sadly no. The reason I say that is I just can't see myself spending $180 on a rebuildable tank atomizer when I have tons of other devices around me that can sub-ohm and can handle higher wattages, which is more uh, of my style of vaping. Now for you vapers out there that don't do a lot of sub-ohming and don't care about higher wattage or anything like that, if you're stuck on the the Pro Vary and or anything like that, you can definitely appreciate the build quality of this tank, which I can also appreciate it, but I just can't see myself spending that kind of money on something that I probably wouldn't be using every single day. Now for those of you out there that are already own K funds and already love them, this one is absolutely going to be for you. I would highly recommend this to anyone that's like a current K fund owner or a Russian or any similar rebuildable tank atomizer. If you already own something similar, then I would say that is highly for you. I would highly recommend it for you. Go out and get yourself one of these because it will be worth it for you. And uh, unfortunately for me, I, I tend to use more of the rebuildable dripping atomizer rather than a standard rebuildable tank atomizer. So this device for me is kind of stuck in the past where I'm kind of moving on to more of the cloud chasing aspect of vaping. But uh, I really love the design. I love the craftsmanship. The build quality is unparalleled in my opinion. So please don't let my words stop you from going out and purchasing one of these devices uh, for yourself. So that about wraps up the video, guys. Don't forget to leave a comment in the box below of what you think of the K-Fun 4 and uh, your opinions on this device. Also check out www.spinfuel.com for lots more of my videos as well as Smoke and Joey and SpinFuel exclusive videos. And as always, vape on.